Back on to our next presentation. It's uh, this uh, presentation is given in English. Our presenter is Kazem Zafari from Fachhochschule Potsdam, and the topic is about uh, open source and web-based geo AI tool for present transparent forest fire prediction. The floor is yours. Thanks. Uh, today I want to present uh, a, a prototype of my PhD, the initial result of my PhD which I developed a web application for the purpose of explainable geospatial artificial intelligence using um, open source geospatial technology. That's why I'm here. For this purpose, um, uh, I uh, use uh, the following architecture, composing of the front end middleware and also the database. The front end is composed of Vue.js as a JavaScript framework and also Maplib GLJS, which is the first fork, open source fork of Mapbox GLJS for map rendering. And also the Geo server and PG tile serve for creating the raster tile and vector tile, both of which are connected to the PostgreSQL and PostGIS database. And also, uh, I'm using uh, the Python Fast API as a middleware for developing API and communication between front end and also the database. Uh, for the purpose of explainability, I uh, train a machine learning model and I host my machine learning model in the um, Docker container uh, to make it possible for the Python to to communicate to my machine learning model. And I use an uh, explainable AI model, which in, the, in, in this case is SHAP, Shapely Additive, uh, which is a Python library for, explain, uh, for explaining uh, a machine learning model, which is model agnostic, which works with the most of the mo machine learning models. And for creating the machine learning model, uh, I choose the wildfire in the state of the Brandenburg as a use case of the, uh, uh, for this case, I, uh, uh, I selected different um, independent variables in different categories. Yes, yeah, sure. Better, thanks. So uh, the main parameter that I considered for the purpose of the training my machine learning models is the vegetation-based index, me meteorological and topographic index. And for the vegetation, I consider NDVI, normalized distance vegetation index, uh, NDMI, which is a moisture index, and GNDMI, which is a green normalized vegetation index, drive or computed from the Sentinel-2 satellite imagery, which was derived using Google Earth engine. So the Sentinel-2 itself composed of 12 different bands, each of which can be used to calculate different products three of which uh, I use for, uh, as a parameter for my machine learning model as ind independent variables. And also I use Landsat satellite imagery for assessing the land surface temperature, LST, and also I use DWD database for creating glo global radiation, precipitation, drought index. And I'll, uh, use the OpenDem as a uh, as a data source for digital terrain model, and I drive the di digital elevation model out of the digital terrain model, and I computed aspect and the slope out of the digital elevation model. And finally, as an inventory data set, I gathered the real burnt area in the state of the Brandenburg from 2000. 13 until 2023 as an inventory data set for testing the accuracy of machine learning model. So I, I went through the sampling process. Actually, all, all the data were pre-processed using GDAL, and I uh, created a sample data set out of the whole data set in a 30-meter resolution. 
and I train my uh, the whole data set using the random forest model, and I assess the accuracy of my uh, machine learning model using the test data set. And at the end, I had a big uh, CSV file, and I transformed this CSV file using the GDAL utility tool to the real raster data set that I can uh, import this raster data set in my backend for the purpose of communication with the users, for the purpose of explainability. The far right image is the result of fire susceptibility uh, of the wildfire in the state of Brandenburg. In the next step, uh, I use all these independent variables and also fire, uh, forest fire susceptibility map to the uh, Jew server and uh, uh, to make it accessible in the front-end application. The user mental map that I imagined here, that user simply clicks on the fire, forest fire susceptibility map in a specific coordinate to get local explanation, to simply put why the random forest model or any kind of machining model predicted a specific area for a certain probability. So the, the user, the decision maker, or whoever is a, a, a group of uh, the category of the user gets explanation or the most contributing factors to the final prediction. That was the, uh, my initial purpose. So uh, the latitude and longitude of the click coordinates goes to the, to the API and uh, I use uh, GDAL location info to get the uh, other predictors the raster value at the ex exact click coordinate. And uh, I connected my explanation, uh, explanatory XI uh, library to the predicted values. And at the end, I get feature importance or the level of the contribution of each predictors, NDVI, NDMI, and 11 predictors that I had in form of JSON, and it will be returned to the front end at the end. And I use D3JS library to visualize in some sort of the bar visualization to uh, explain the, the most contributing factor and the level of the contribution if, uh, of each predictors to, to the prediction at the click coordinate of the susceptibility map. Uh, this is the whole process. Um, the, the map components um, listens to the clicked coordinate, latitude and longitude of the user that clicked. It goes uh, to my other components and sends, uh, first of all, checks use, uh, using the turf JS if the click coordinate is inside the boundary box of the SID area then sends this um, click coordinate as a payload to the API that I developed, get local shaft values. And it goes to my Python backend. As, a, and as I mentioned, um, I defined the TIFF directory contains all of my predictors. And using GDAL location info, it gets the, um, uh, the value of the predictor at the click coordinate and retains a JSON file, and this can be used as an input for the shaft value for the purpose of explanation. At the end, I have a JSON file composed of feature importance, and uh, it will be returned to the front end. Uh, to show the prototype system, this is my Twitter. <laughs> and. Uh, so this is the, uh, the module that I developed, uh, which is called Explainable AI. By clicking on this, it sends a request to the backend, and the, the forest fire prediction result or raster uh, in the format of cloud optimized GOT will be retrieved in the front end and make, uh, uh, make it interactable by the user. So user clicks on the arbitrary uh, coordinate. And it sends it, uh, it, all the process that I explained before will be executed in my uh, in my backend API that I called. So in the chart, uh, a histogram will be created. Uh, 
So the histogram data will be retrieved here, and also the raster values and shaft values, and all of which will be plotted in the D3JS diagram here. So uh, beside the explanation, the values user can interact with the, uh, with the chart, and for example, with hovering on each indicator, uh, the, the request layer can be added, and user can visually explore uh, the data set, each of the indicators uh, uh, that were involved for the purpose of the uh, prediction. And that's much of it, the thing that uh, I implemented so far. I would be happy to answer your question or get your recommendation. Thank you very much, Kazem. Uh, you still have 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, any questions here in, in the room? I don't got any. Ah, there's a question. Could you go and bring the microphone, please? Um, until my assistant is there. Um, did, you, did you calculate these indices on your own, or did you uh, use Google Earth Engine to do this for you? I uh, used Google Earth Engine to retrieve the products, for example, Sentinel-2 product. Then the, I used GDAL to uh, having all the bands. I used GDAL for the simple calculation to calculate, for example, in DVI. In DVI can be calculated, if I'm not wrong, band 1 and band 2. For example, B2 minus uh, B4, uh, a simple calculation can be done to retrieve or calculate a specific uh, product. And as a machine learner, use random forest? Yes, random it's a random forest, forest model. Which, which library did you use for? Um, I used the uh, Jupyter Notebook for the training and test. And, uh, Probably scikit-learn. I used um, yeah, scikit-learn for the training and testing my uh, data set. Yeah. So the question that I have is: so you mentioned using PG TileSurf. So where exactly do you did you use vector tiles? Uh, we have a general module here. And uh, which is called uh, layers, basically. By clicking on this icon, a simple API will be sent to the backend and list all the name of the existing tables in the PostGIS table. So it gets the name of the table. By clicking on, the, on each uh, switch buttons, uh, it, it will uh, request the tiles, basically. For example, um, all the drains and uh, for different existing layers or Kita or Landkreis or different existing layer in the database. So, so th this is my PG tile serve backend. And this is all the existing uh, tables in the PostJS table. It automatically uh, creates this list. And beside that, it uh, connects to the Geo server using Geo ser server REST API to get all the existing uh, COG or raster in the Geo server. Of course, it's admin Geo server. There's um, also a question um, related to the indicators that you used. Um, it's sort of clear where they are from. Are they used as input for the machine learning? I guess this addresses the slide that you showed before. The input variables, so presentation, yeah, drought index, and so on. So it's composed of NDVI, NDMI, GNDVI uh, as a vegetation index, and also for the meteorological in indice indices, I use global radiation, LST, precipita precipitation, and drought index, and also topographical indexes, which is DEM, 
or aspect and slope. Okay, I hope that's uh, answered the question. Uh, one related to is um, about the, the importance of the features. Which one was the most important input feature? Uh, exactly. As I showed here, for example, most of the uh, machine learning model at the end of the uh, training and testing process give you a, a global explanation for the feature importance, as you can hear. For example, for the whole data set, the NDMI had the biggest influence for the prediction. But what I try to do, provide user with a local explanation, with a simple uh, interaction by clicking to, uh, on, the, uh, on the arbitrary raster value or single uh, raster value here. So as you can see here, for example, user can click and get explanation and in the selected uh, pixel, for example, in the specific area. Why the random forest model, for example, predicted that it's not susceptible to the wildfire. As you can see, NDMI, because maybe it was highly um, uh, moisturous, that's why it affected uh, the whole prediction like that. Um, then we have here one or two questions from the room. Just related to um, the question you just answered. Oops. Okay. Uh, just related to the question you just answered, I was just wondering, so, so these are the input um, uh, like high moisture, or is this the output of the model saying high moisture was very important for me? Uh, this is the output of the uh, forest fire prediction, uh, uh, the image that you can see. And if the user wants uh, to get a more detailed explanation about the selected, for example, digital elevation model, the raster of the digital mo elevation model will be overlaid on the top of the forest fire prediction raster, and they can see uh, the distribution of the values of the digital elevation model, for example. And they can see the, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. Um, do you expect, <coughs> respect any time dependency in the model? Uh, no, uh, unfortunately or, or not now. Did you take the <coughs> data from a specific uh, point in time? Exactly. Uh, so here we have all the burns areas, the data set in the area, and uh, the time-dependent indicators, which are mostly here, uh, the meteorological data that are time-dependent. So uh, in the data set that I have here for the burns area, there are information about the time of the incident of the wildfire. So Inside the um, inside uh, the DWD data set um, uh, uh, database, I looked for the indices or uh, for the uh, for the time before the happening of the real incident. For example, two months or tr two weeks or three weeks. But at the end, I uh, computed the average of the, all the values for the final raster. Okay, um, thank you very much for your presentation and answering the questions. And uh, we continue here in this room in 15 minutes uh, with the presentation on the QGS plugin. What's the impact of my installed dam on the vegetation around it? Presented by Barrett.